Here's for everyone who makes and serves shepherd's pie but uses beef instead of the classical lamb. Believe it or not, there's actually a traditional name for it when using beef in this recipe. It's called cottage pie. Now I am gonna take the liberty and add a few more veggies, caramelize the onions up super well, and maybe even hit it with a little bit of red wine to try and pull out as much flavor as possible. What we are gonna do is start off by knocking out some prep. Sound good? Let's cook. We are gonna start off with one medium-sized yellow onion. You could also use a white onion or a sweet onion here. We're gonna slice off the end, slice in half, take off that outside peel, and then what we wanna do is small dice it. We're just gonna set this to the side in a separate bowl. Next, I have two leeks. Now you can only go so deep into the green of that leek or else it gets really tough. So we're gonna slice it about six inches up. We're gonna slice it in half, slice it in half again. And then what we wanna do is thinly slice each of these. This looks perfect. So leeks tend to be really, really dirty. So we're gonna transfer this over to a colander and then we're going right over to the sink under cold water. We just wanna give them a good rinse to get any of that dirt or mud off of there and set that to the side right with the onions. Next, I have two medium sized carrots, which we just wanna give a quick peel to and keeping it the same consistency as the onions, we are also going to small dice these, set them to the side. Then next, I have a surprise for you. This is known as celery root. This is the root of a celery. It's got great flavor. This one is pretty big. So we're going to quarter it and peel it then we're gonna small dice it just like the other one. Now you're going to need about a cup or 250 milliliters of this once it's done. Last but not least with the root vegetables, I have one medium to large size turnip. We're going to give it a quick peel. And just like with the celery act root, we wanna give it a small to medium sized dice. And in the end, we're looking for about one cup or 240 milliliters. And Comey's, have some fun here. Root vegetables are an absolute staple in Ireland. So you can add things like a parsnip or even a rutabaga. The whole point is these extra vegetables will add a lot more flavor to this cottage pie. You know the Italian is coming out because I wanna add some garlic in here. So I have four cloves that we're gonna give a quick smash to and then we're gonna finely mince. Set those to the side and then let's bring out the beef. I have two pounds or 908 grams of ground sirloin. Now you could certainly use ground chuck or if you wanted to step it up a little bit, you could grind it yourself or even use ground short rib. The better quality, the better this cottage pie is going to be. We're gonna bring that beef right over to a large rondeau and add in three tablespoons or 45 grams of olive oil over medium high heat. We're adding in the beef. All we wanna do here is give it a sear and cook it through. Allowing it to brown up is going to add so much more flavor to this cottage pie, so definitely take the time to do this. But we also want to render some of that fat. So once it is cooked through and lightly brown, we are going to set it to the side on a plate. Then we're going back over to that rondeau pot with all that rendered deliciousness in there. Let's add in our onions, followed up with our leeks. Then what we're going to do is take the time to caramelize these over low to medium heat. This can take up to 45 minutes, but I promise you the flavor will be well worth it. You know this is a chef tip that I absolutely love. Take the time to caramelize these onions. Does it take a few extra minutes? Sure. Is it worth it? 100%. Slow down and let all those beautiful caramelized onion flavors come out and it will make this cottage pie that much better. All right, after about 30 minutes or so, we're gonna come back and check out our onions and leeks. They look fantastic, nice and golden brown. So at this stage, we're going to add in the carrots, the celery act root, and then last but not least, the turnips. Now, what we wanna do is just saute this, maybe just four to five minutes and get a nice little brown on them over medium heat. This right here looks perfect. So add in the garlic, give it a quick stir, and you know once you smell it, it's done, which only takes 30 to 45 seconds. At this stage, we're going to add the cooked beef back into that same pot. Just give it a stir to mix all the ingredients together to incorporate. What I like to do here, and for a little bit more flavor, nice little chef tip, add in some red wine. I'm gonna be using one cup or 240 grams. You could use Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Shiraz, you be the judge. We're going to cook it to au sec or almost gone. So once it's mostly absorbed, we're next gonna add in a quarter cup or 60 grams of tomato paste. This is gonna add a lot of body, flavor, and color to our cottage pie. Once it's mixed in, it should look just like this. What we wanna do now is create a roux. 
So we're going to add in a quarter cup or 30 grams of all-purpose flour. Just sprinkle it all over the top. Then using your spoon, combine everything together. You'll notice that the beef will tighten up and it'll get really thick just like this. This is perfect because we're next going to add in two and a half cups or 600 grams of good beef stock. Got a great homemade recipe for it if you want to check that out. Then using that same spoon, just mix everything to combined and it should look like a nice cheeseburger casserole if you've ever had that. Not too loose, not too tight. This is perfect. Now what we're going to do is add in some seasoning, starting with one tablespoon or 15 grams of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons or 30 grams of Dijon mustard. This will add so much flavor. Next, we want to generously season it up with coarse sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Then finish it off with two teaspoons or two grams of chopped fresh thyme. Mix everything to combine. Be sure to taste it. Make sure it's delicious. This is perfect timing because while those flavors are marrying, we can start to prep up our mashed potato topping. Now, I spoke with my good friend Gemma over at Bigger Boulder Baking, who's literally from Ireland, so it doesn't get any more authentic than this. She said you should absolutely use rusted potatoes. That's the closest thing in the States to the roosters that are in Ireland. She said to me, only a mad person would use a Yukon potato. So guess what? Russets it is. And we've got a lot of them. This is five pounds or 2,267 grams of russet potatoes. Give them a peel. Then what I'm going to do is cut them down to quarters. You could cut them even smaller. This is just so that they cook a little bit more quickly and so they don't brown up. Usually what I like to do is hold them in some cold water. Once they are all cut up, it's cheese time. Dubliner cheese is so good. We're going to need eight ounces or 226 grams. Now, if you can't find Dubliner cheese, Gruyere actually works really well or a good aged white cheddar. And I always do it on parchment paper to make it easy to transport. Now let's go over to a large pot of boiling salted water. It should taste as salty as the sea. Let's add in our potatoes. It's going to take about 12 to 13 minutes. I usually know when they're done when I pierce them with a fork and they fall right off just like this. Next, just drain them and get ready for mashing. If you like chunky mashed potatoes, totally fine. But another chef tip for you, invest in a food mill. It's a great way to make perfectly smooth mash for any vegetable, not just potatoes. Also, it's awesome at crushing tomatoes. All right, here's how I make these mashed potatoes. Going back over to the food mill and that drained pot, we're going to add in a few of the potatoes at a time. And then again, this food mill, this is just something I grew up with in the restaurant industry, and I love how they make the potatoes silky smooth. This is perfect. Now, what we're going to do is add in a half cup or 120 grams of buttermilk, one stick or 113 grams of melted unsalted butter, one cup or 240 milliliters of that grated cheese, two egg yolks for some nice fat and flavor, then we're going to generously season it with coarse sea salt and ground white pepper. We want to keep the mashed potatoes nice and white. This is perfect just for aesthetic reasons. Just something I was always taught back in the day. Be sure to taste it. Make sure it's delicious. And I'm going to put these in a piping bag. Just like in my shepherd's pie video, I want to make some cool designs on the top of this cottage pie. Now, when it comes to adding that mashed potato topping, you can do whatever you want. It can be flat. You can have florets, zigzags. You be the judge. Just remember to have some fun. Now I'm going to load up a deep 13 by 9 casserole dish with that cottage pie beef filling. Just flatten it out so it's nice and even perfect. Now for me, I'm feeling a little zigzaggy, like I said. So we're going to add three rows of zigzags. And again, this does not have to be perfect in any way because it is going to change once you bake it. And because I have some more potatoes, let's go for a double layer of mashed potatoes. What's better than one layer? Two layers, exactly. Next, we're going to drizzle on about a quarter cup or 60 grams of melted unsalted butter. This is going to help our potatoes brown up nice. Then finish it with a half cup or 240 milliliters of grated Dubliner cheese. Take that pan uncovered going in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes or until it's nice and browned up on top. Yep, even the Italian in me applies to Irish food. You know I'm trying to feed the whole block. Obviously this makes a lot, but it also freezes very well before you bake it or even after you bake it. Pop it in the freezer, pull it out, bake it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius for about 40 to 45 minutes until nice and browned up and cooked through. And we'll still always go back to these fundamental techniques, trying to pull as much flavor out as possible so that this cottage pie is insanely delicious. All right, once it's done, we're going to pull it out. And while there's not much to plate up other than garnishing with just a little bit of fresh herbs, I'm going to do parsley. Let's at least take some of it out. 
The parsley is totally optional, just gives a nice green flavor. And let's of course pull a big scoop out of this. Yep, looks pretty dang good to me. Such a comforting dish and the depth of flavor in this is incredible. While it's just only cottage pie, it doesn't have to be. As long as you stick to those techniques, the flavor will come out and it's so good. Now, if you love this, you will absolutely love my apple Irish cake. I've got an awesome recipe video. See you on there.